Um, so our first question is, what is architecture? Um, well, for me, at least, architecture is the ordering of space. So it's about how space gets ordered and organized. And what can it do? Um, well, I think what in doing that, architecture allows for the creation of new spatial organizations or allows for new spatial organizations to come into some new form. So the power of architecture lies in its ability to help transform spatial relationships and social relationships. And what can the effect be on people? Well, it's particularly when it talks about social relationships, it means that architecture organizes space so that new forms of interaction and new relationships can emerge, whether between person to person or groups to groups or cities to cities or you know, nations to nations even. The way in which the, the space gets organized allows for new sets of formulations between people. And how you do... Um how do you position yourself in this course of architecture? Uh, well, my, my I'm both a, an, an educator and an architect as a practicing architect. And my interest lies in the ways in which uh, the work that takes place takes place both in terms of a kind of iterative process, but also in terms of the way that uh, uh, transformations can occur. So it's about how architecture creates transformations of social structure. Uh, do you have any references in architecture you like? Or... Uh, you mean of other architects or other buildings? Yeah, yeah, too many. I mean, I, I have lots. I mean, one of the buildings I really enjoyed the most in the last sort of five years that I've seen is the Glass Museum by Sana, by Sejima in Nishizawa in Toledo, Ohio. It's the, it's the first building I saw where the structure of the building is also the diagram of the building because the glass is the diagram and the glass is also the walls. And last question, uh, what is your preferred design method? Uh, yeah, it's really sort of iteration in terms of working through projects, not, not with a single idea, but constantly changing and, and testing and retesting and reformulating. And it's also working from a premise of what I would call uh, learned ignorance. That is to say, having to be ignorant each time you start a new project because if you build up too much knowledge that you always employ, then you never learn something new. So you have to start from a position of ignorance, even if you already know a lot.